2 Chronicles chapter 29. We'll begin reading in verse number 3. Uh, this is speaking of Hezekiah. The Bible says, verse number 3, He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. And he brought in the priest and the Levites and gathered them together into the east street. And he said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. For our fathers have transpressed trans trespassed and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God and have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs. Also they have shut up the doors of the porch and have put out the lamps and have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. Wherefore, the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons, be not now negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, that ye should minister unto him and burn incense. Then the Levites rose, Mahath the son of Amasai, and Joel the son of Azariah, the sons of the Kohathites, and the sons of Meriah, Kish the son of Abdi, and Azariah the son of Jehaliel, and the Gershonites, uh, uh, and of the Gershonites, Joah the son of Zema, and Eden the son of Joah, and the sons of Elisphan, Shemri, and Jeel, and the sons of Asaph, Zechariah, and Madaniah, and the sons of Heman, Jehalo, and Shimei, Shimei and the sons of Jehuthun, Shemiah and Uziel, and they gathered their brethren and sanctified themselves and came according to the commandment of the king by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, again, we thank you for what you've done this morning. But God, we thank you for what you've already done around here tonight. Lord, I thank you for the good singing. I thank you for the sobering spirit. I thank you, Lord, for those that dedicate their Sunday evenings to deal with the children and the teens over on the other side. I pray you'd bless their efforts. I pray for those precious uh, young hearts that, Lord, they'd find the Word of God as precious and they'd find a lodging place in their heart for it that they might not sin against you. Father, I pray for any of them that have not been saved that, Lord, tonight would be the night they realize their need of a Savior and get saved. Those that have been saved, I pray you'd insulate them, put a hedge about them. Lord, the peer pressure they face, Lord, is, is uh, insurmountable. And God, without your hand, they'll cert certainly uh, 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 be tempted to be led astray. So I pray you'd help them. And God, we certainly pray for these that are here tonight, that God, you'd do something special and edify the saints of God. Now, Father, I pray for Miss Mary. I pray for Miss Crystal and baby Elizabeth. I pray for others that are sick, that God, you'd touch them, that you'd help them. And God, we're trusting in you to do for them what no one else can do. You're the great physician, and I pray that, God, you'd do a great work in their hearts and in their lives. Father, that their doctors and their nurses may be astounded at the greatness of our God. Lord, they would go by scratching their heads saying, only God could have done this. And God, I pray we'd see folks saved as a result of how you work in that situation. Now, Father, help us tonight from the Word of God. I pray that, Lord, uh, it would illuminate our minds to truth. I pray that, Lord, you would uh, undergird us, you'd help us. And, Lord, I do pray for revival, that, Lord, you'd revive us again. Use this unworthy vessel. 
glorify your namesake. We'll not fail to bless you and praise you for what you do. For it's in the wonderful and the holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to several things. Israel had forsaken the Lord. And can I say, any time that you try to do anything out of the energy of the flesh and you do it without God's touch, uh, you're going to make a mess of things. Well, uh, friends, uh, uh, Jesus said, without him we can do nothing. It amazes me how many places call themselves churches today, but they've forsaken the Lord. They've forsaken his word. They've forsaken his order. They've forsaken what he stands for and what he stands against. Uh, 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 many people have adopted the ideology uh, uh, to reach this current lore, uh, world. Uh, we got to modernize things and we got to break things down and we got to do this and do this. Uh, listen, uh, the word of God makes it clear that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, he faileth not uh, and he changeth not. Uh, and friend, we don't need anything new. Uh, if it's new, it's not true. And if it's true, it's not new. Uh, uh, we need to do as Jeremiah said, get back to the old paths uh, and walk therein. Uh, that's the good way. Uh, we'll find rest for our souls. Uh, friend, I'm not looking for some modern method uh, to win a world. Uh, I'm looking for God uh, to once again touch His people, uh, honor His word. Uh, God to part the Red Sea of complacency uh, and God to do a work in our midst uh, we find that they had forsaken the Lord uh, and can I say they failed to upkeep the house of God we read where they'd uh, 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 boarded up the porch, uh, where they'd let the uh, lamps go out. Uh, one of the commands that God gave to Moses uh, is that there was always to be oils in the lamp, uh, and the lamp uh, and the light of God was to never go out in the house of God. Uh, can I say there's a lot of places that got steeples, but there's no light inside the sanctuary. And I say they not only f uh, had forsaken the Lord and failed to upkeep the house of God, we find that it even mentions that they had fallen. Fallen by sword, their wives and daughters and, da and sons were held in captivity. All because they turned their back on God. Can I say what's going on in America is not the world's fault. What's going on in America is not Washington's fault. What's going on in America is the result of people no longer here, uh, obeying God in churches uh, not being what they should be in all along. Uh, I have said for uh, uh, years, uh, hey, if the church would have been what the church was supposed to be during the Great Depression, uh, we wouldn't have needed a new deal. Uh, we wouldn't have the welfare system we got in America today. Uh, we wouldn't have uh, uh, over half of our tax dollars uh, uh, funding people too lazy to work. Uh, Listen, there are some able-bodied people on welfare. Uh, they don't need to be on welfare. Uh, the Bible says if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. Uh, I realize there are some uh, uh, who uh, uh, do need it. There are some uh, whose situation is where they can't work. Uh, uh, but listen, even when FDR put it in, uh, welfare was not designed to be a generational thing. Uh, we got folks that have been uh, on welfare for nine and ten generations. Uh, and now politicians have learned to make that work for them. Uh, they want to keep people on welfare, uh, keep giving them to, uh, free cell phones and free this and free that uh, so they can buy their votes. Uh, listen, uh, America's in a mess because uh, churches quit being charitable, uh, uh, because churches quit having the power of God on them, uh, because God's people quit looking at God and started looking at the government. Uh, can I say... Uh, the government says we can't have God in schools, and the church says, okay. The government says you can't no longer have nativity scenes in public places, and the church says, okay. The government says uh, you got to close because of a virus, and the church says, okay. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, America's problems uh, is because God's people are no longer trusting in God. We find by the time Hezekiah comes on the scene and the first year of his reign and the first month of his first year, he starts righting the wrongs and revival comes to Jerusalem, the nation of Israel. 
Can I say that in chapters 29, 30, and 31 of Second Chronicles, you find revival comes after Hezekiah starts righting the wrongs. Say, what did he do? Well, first of all, he performed the word of God. He told the Levites, you need to come and start being Levites again. Uh, and he told them what they were supposed to do, and they did it. Uh, listen, uh, we can have the greatest preachers come through here, uh, preach the greatest messages, the greatest outlines you ever heard. Uh, but friends, uh, until God's people uh, uh, start taking ownership of what thus saith the Lord uh, and start doing what God says, uh, uh, there will be no change. Uh, listen, uh, uh, we can have our favorite preachers and favorite saints uh, and we can come and be entertained uh, but friends until we start doing what God says uh, have a repentant heart towards God uh, and start picking up the word of God uh, and uh, being what God intended for us to be all along uh, there'll be no hope for America there'll be no hope for Kentucky uh, there'll be no hope for Florence uh, uh, friends uh, we have the keys to the kingdom of heaven uh, we have the power of heaven behind us uh, we have every Everything we need uh, to charge the gates of hell uh, and prevail. Uh, but my dear friends, uh, as long as we sit on the stool and do nothing, uh, nothing will change. Uh, they perform the word of God. My dear friends, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not getting any younger. I've still got all the zeal that I had when I was a young man to see God do something. But I've taken about all the shots I can take of preaching my lungs till they're leather, preaching my brains out, only to see the crowd that calls me pastor to take for granted that I'll be here forever. I can go other places and preach and folks flock to what God says. I come home and you look at me like, oh, here he goes again. And there's no change. You know why we don't have another building out front? Because you haven't wanted one. Wow. Mm. I am so heartbroken that a month ago we put it together 100 packets and we still got 25 left. We need revival. Revival starts when we start doing what God says. Amen. When we quit getting so consumed with us and we get consumed with Him. Mm. Can I say they not only performed the word of God, they purified the house of God. They got all the stuff that stunk in the nostrils of God out of it. Uh, can I say, and I dare say, many times as I preached on Facebook, we'll come in to have church, and I, I, I guarantee you, while we're sitting here waiting for church to start, some are on Facebook. You're bringing sacrilege into the house of God. This is the holy. Huh? If Jesus ch drove out the money changers, what do you think he'd do with that wickedness of Facebook? Yeah. Amen. By the way, the fella that owns that's against the church. Let me say that again because some of you don't believe that. The fella that owns Facebook is against the church. He is an antichrist. In every moment that you spend promoting him, you're telling Jesus that that guy means more to you than he does. Amen. And you bring it into God's house and want God's blessing. Now that's nowhere in my notes. It was nowhere in my thought process. But thank you, Holy Ghost, because somebody's guilty of that. Amen. Amen. There are other things we bring into the house of God. We come into the house of God, we talk more about football teams than we talk about what Jesus did. Right. Mm -mm. We care more about uh, uh, things that we have uh, invested our lives in other than what Jesus has invested in, the church. Amen. Mm. Boy, this is going over real good. Yeah. Truth's truth, whether people like it or not. Amen. Mm. Say, preacher, I don't like it. I don't care. That's what God said to do. Maybe some more of you had had some songs and testified, we wouldn't be preaching again tonight. I guess you got satisfied enough this morning. Hmm. They purified the house of God. House of God became holy. Became a place of worship. 
became a place where they esteemed higher and better than anywhere else in the world. Can I say? You go read these chapters, 29, 30, and 31. See what they did. They prepared for worship. They began to offer sacrifices. Let me ask you a question. How much did you pray before tonight's service? How much did you seek God for tonight's service? How much have you sown this week asking God to breathe on this place this weekend? They prepared for worship. And can I say, Miss Marcy... They just didn't have to offer prayers. They had to slay animals. They had to burn carcasses. They had to offer up blood sacrifices. They had to get down in the nitty gritty dirty to prove their devotion. All God asks us to do is to love Him and seek Him with our whole heart. And yet, it's so easy to seek Him and we don't. They prepared for worship. Can I say? They sent out a proclamation to every providence that come to worship. Come back to the house of God. Come and hear what thus saith the Lord. Uh, We have once again opened the doors of the house of God at Jerusalem. Uh, uh, You are not only uh, invited, uh, you are more than requested. Uh, It is required of the king that you come to the house of God. Uh, They sent out proclamation. How many people have you invited to the house of God this week? They kept the Passover. It had been a generation since the Passover was kept. And now they're keeping the Passover. How long has it been since we've had revival? It's been well over 100 years in America... I think it's about time we start getting the blood around here on the doorposts and on the lintels of our hearts. Amen. Hmm. And then, go along with that song she just sang. She had no idea what I'd studied this week. You find the last thing they did before revival came, they put away their idols. You say, well, preacher, I don't have any statues around my house. How about any idols in your heart? What gets your attention? Because if anything gets more your attention than Jesus, it's an idol. Some people, their jobs, they're idol. Some people, their bank accounts, they're idol. Some people, what they got in the garage is their idol. Some people, uh, 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 their hobbies, their idol. Some people, it's some kind of athlete or or a famous person is their idol. Somebody that gets more of their attention than Jesus becomes their idol. They put away their idols. Hmm? Hmm. I'm interested in verse number 11. This is one of the first things Hezekiah tells the Levites before they did all those things and then revival came to the nation of Israel. What did he say? Verse 11, he says, My sons, be not now negligent. See, the Israel have been negligent for years. He gives them the word of the Lord and says, Now, be not negligent. I want to preach with God's help for a few nights, a few minutes tonight on don't be negligent. See, yesterday's gone. Can't do anything about that. You need to turn from it, get it under the blood, repent of it, and go on. But from this night forward, don't be negligent. Say, preacher, I've let this come into my life. Well, get it out of your life and don't be negligent. Don't be negligent anymore. Say, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, first of all, don't be negligent to get saved. If you're here and you're, you're not saved and God's revealed to you you're not saved, don't put it off any longer. He's coming. And when He comes, uh, it'll be too late for you to get saved. So don't be negligent anymore. You put it out off long enough, 
It's time for you to do business with the king. It's time for you to get in the family of God. Don't be negligent. Get saved. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, children of God, uh, 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 we need to let others know uh, not to be negligent. It's time to get saved. Uh, hey, the nighttime cometh when no man can be work. Uh, can work. Uh, we need to be busy about the Father's business. Uh, we need to stop being negligent uh, about what Jesus did on the cross. Uh, he gave his life. He shed his blood. Uh, hey, he was buried according to the Scriptures. Uh, rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave uh, for one reason uh, so you and I and sinners could be saved from our sins. Uh, don't be negligent with the good news. You watch Fox, CNN, MSNBC, any other ones out there, they're going to give you slighted news. The only good news that this world needs to hear is that Jesus saves Jesus saves. Uh, don't be negligent to get saved if you're not saved. Uh, to the child of God, listen, don't be negligent to stand. Uh-uh. Listen, I believe Miss uh, Brittany's song talked about standing. Look what it says verse 11. My sons, be not now negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you to stand before Him. Uh, listen, uh, 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 God didn't cho choose us to sit down. Uh, God didn't choose us to go sit on a hill and wait for Him to come. Uh, God didn't choose us uh, uh, to feed the poor. Uh, God chose us uh, to make us stand. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I'm so sick and tired of Christians cowering down uh, out of this sorry no good world uh, we don't even contend with the devil anymore uh, 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 listen uh, it's time that we stand up uh, it's time having done all to stand stand therefore uh, it's time we let people know uh, we're not taking that alternate lifestyle stuff anymore uh, hey we're not taking uh, the woke crowd and the cancel crowd anymore uh, uh, it's time we stand up and say we're not racist and we're against that uh, it's time we stand up and say uh, hey, the First Amendment of the Constitution allows us to openly worship, uh, and we're going to do it. Uh, hey, it's time uh, uh, we quit worrying about people's feelings, uh, and we start realizing they're on their way to hell, uh, and it's time we make a stand. Uh, I quote what David said when he came to deliver supplies to his brother uh, and he heard uh, uh, that uncircumcised Philistine of a giant cursing God and cursing the armies of God. Uh, and he said, is there not a cause? Uh, uh, friend, is there not a cause uh, for you and I to stand up and be counted for? Uh, I'm not much, but I want people to know I'm on the Lord's side. Hmm. A man that won't stand for something will fall for anything. P.T. Barnum said there's a sucker born every minute. And there's a lot of folks that have been hoodwinked because Christians haven't made a stand. Don't be negligent to stand. Need to stand. Stand on the job. Stand at school. Stand in the community. Stand uh, 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 at church. Uh, just stand for the, for the honor and glory of God. Huh? preached a message one time I'd rather limp into heaven than to burn out for the glory of the devil uh, listen don't be negligent don't be negligent to stand don't be negligent to submit our revival problem is really comes down to this brother Aaron our revival problems we have a submission problem We know what the will of God is. We just don't want to do it. We want the preacher to do it. We want the deacons to do it. We want other people to do it. We just don't want to do it. Amen. Hmm. We just don't want to. Hmm. We don't want to submit. Hmm. We like doing things our way. Listen, I, I'd like to lose a little bit of weight, but I don't want to lose it bad enough to quit eating ice cream every night. Well, that's why we are Christians. Right. We know that God wants us to be what we can be for Him. We just don't want to submit to do it. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. We want Him to do it. We want her to do it. We want them to do it. But we don't want us to have to do it. Listen, if the future of this church depended on you, what's the future looking like? Hmm? 
How faithful are you? How submitted are you? How surrendered are you? Maybe you haven't realized this. COVID was just a test. By the way, Friday night at 8 o'clock on their website, Pfizer admitted that they mutated that COVID virus to make it worse so they can make more money on vaccines. They admitted that. They don't even hide it anymore. You know why? Because the media isn't going to say anything about it, and you and I wouldn't do anything about it anyway. Most people are sheep. People, you got to wear a mask. Okay. Well, listen. When are we going to wake up and see they know how successful they was the last time? Now, what are they going to do? They announced that to the world, the church was not essential the last time. Now, for those of us who make a stand, they're going to put a bullseye on us. Are you going to submit to do the will of God? Or are you going to do the will of Andy Bashir? Hmm? I've been in some camp meetings. I've been in... And it, and it came out, you know, that we didn't close for that whole summer. And that revival broke. Baptist preachers look at me like I'm a nut. Say, what do you do? I look at them like they're a nut. Do you know down in the Carolinas right now, they're closing back up? You know why? Because people take it. It's time we submit to do the will of God regardless of what comes down the pike. I'm not talking about being outlaws, and I'm not talking about being doing things ignorantly, but we have a legal right to do what we're doing. And court system after court system after court system said all their mandates were unconstitutional. Hmm? And yet churches had to close over that. Hmm? Why don't the churches go back and sue those governors? for all the lost revenue for being closed for six months. You know what? That put an end to a lot of it. No. We need to submit. Don't be negligent. Submit. Amen. I'm going to do the will of God. Yes. Now I'm going to tell you something. Amen. Right now, mark her down. You submit, the devil's going to try you. Right. I'm all in, God. I guarantee you, you do that this week, he's going to see how all are in the yard, the devil will. Hmm. All of a sudden, Miss Vanessa, you say, I'm all in. And then the devil's going to put a choice right before you on Wednesday. Well, do I go all in and go to church or do I get this taken care of over here? Because this is important over here. Well, this right here needs to be told. Well, I'll get to it Thursday, not Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm going to the house of God. Amen. See, submission is more than idle words. Submission is a change of heart towards God and His will. Don't be negligent. Don't be negligent to offer supplication. You've heard me say for years, prayer is where the power of God comes from. Hmm? You know why one was saved at the jail and one was saved in our service this morning? Because there was a handful of people here last night praying for somebody to get saved today. Hmm? There was folks that's too far to come here for for a little Saturday night prayer meeting, but they submitted in their house at 9 o'clock to pray for folks to be saved today. Don't be negligent in your prayer life. If there's any area in your life you need not to be negligent, it's your prayer life. Mm. God help us to pray, pray, and pray some more. Mm. We ought to always have an attitude of prayer. Mm. You ought to have a mind given to prayer. You ought to be sensitive when the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart to offer up prayer on behalf of whatever He speaks to you about. Mm? We need to pray. Don't be negligent in your supplication and your prayer time. You ought to have a, a, a place where you can pray. You ought to have a time set when you can pray. And then you need to be willing to pray throughout the day. Mm? I don't know about you, but when them emergency prayer requests come through, I know the people on the other end appreciate your prayers. Mm. Uh, God help us to be given to prayer. I'm reminded there 
Lystra, when Paul showed up, there was a few, uh, Lydia and a few ladies there, and prayer was wont to be made. Hmm? Say, what happened? A church was founded there. Why? Because the great apostle Paul? No, because there were some folks who wanted to pray. God honors prayer. God help us to pray and pray. Don't be negligent in your prayer life. Hmm? Don't be negligent to serve. I read this the other day, and I really had never given it much thought, Brother James. But you know in the Bible, leadership is only mentioned twice. There's a lot of people say, well, I want to be a leader in the church. I want to be a leader. I want to be a leader. I want to be a leader. But you know, servants mentioned over 500 times. Hmm? Can I say, the Lord's not looking for any leaders. He does the leading. He's looking for servants. Hmm? The two deacons we have are sitting in positions of deacons because they're servants. Uh, listen, the men who sit uh, 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 as our trustees are there because they're servants. People who teach classes in our church are there because they're servants. I'm not looking for leaders. Leaders are a mess. They're looking for recognition. Hmm? Leaders have a hard time taking orders. But can I say the Lord's real good about commanding us what to do and servants are real good about following. Don't be negligent to serve. You know, there is nothing that glorifies the Lord more than seeing your willingness to serve. Hmm? He wants you to serve Him and serve Him with gladness. Can I say if we got what we deserve, we'd be in hell tonight. Uh, we deserve to be in hell for things we've said and done since we got saved. Uh, but hey, I'm not going to hell. Uh, the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed me from all sin. Uh, he broke the chains of sin in my life. Uh, he sealed me with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, he wrote my name down in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, I'm a citizen of heaven. Uh, my conversation is recorded there. Uh, hey, I'm heaven bound with the hammer down. What a blessing. Uh, and hey, because of all that Jesus done for me, uh, it's a thrill to be able to serve Him. Uh, it's not always convenient to serve. Uh, it's not always popular to serve. Uh, but it's always right to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He's worthy of our praise. But even more importantly, he's worthy of our life because he bought it with a price. We ought to serve the Lord and serve him with gladness. Thank God for servants. They get the job done. You know, a servant don't care who gets the recognition as long as his name is Jesus. I just want to serve him. May all the honor, all the praise, all the glory go to him because he's worthy of it. It's a thrill to serve the Lord. I worry about some of these guys. The first thing they want to start asking is what, what they can get out of it. Let me help you what you get out of it. Heaven. Uh, you get the peace of God out of it. You get love, gentleness, goodness, meekness, kindness, all the fruits of the Spirit. You get things that the world cannot buy. Uh, Thank God. Don't be negligent to serve. We ought to serve Christ. We ought to serve in the church. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. Thank God we got a good church. Thank God we got a lot of folks do things around the church. Mm, hey, there's always room for more to serve in the church. What a blessing to have a church. Uh, we don't have a fellowship. We got the church. Mm? We don't have a denomination. We have a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a privilege to serve in the church. What a privilege to serve Christ. But we also ought to serve in the community. How will the community know the greatness of Christ in our life unless we do something for folks, just like what we're going to do for those police officers? Huh? We're just going to show the kindness of God to them, the love of God to them, show them some respect. Hmm? What a blessing. You know what Big Doug told me today? The Lord has opened up an avenue where he has a relationship with General Flynn. And it might be we could get General Flynn here. Have a God and Country Day. said he would be thrilled to come. Think about that. What better than to 
show respect to those that have served our country and then preach the gospel. Hmm? Huh? What a blessing. You say, how does God do that? Now, he's God. If we're servants and we just go through the doors God opens, there's no tell what God will do. Hmm? We ought to serve. Don't be negligent to serve. Hmm? It's amazing. We'll serve our, our, our bosses on our jobs, but we won't serve the Lord. Huh? Don't be negligent to seek the Lord. He says, seek and you shall find. You ought to seek Him early. You ought to seek Him often. Seek the Lord. Huh? Listen. There's never been a time I didn't ask the Lord to open a door to show me something or do something that, you know what? I run right in the middle of a situation and the Lord did it all. Hmm? Just seek Him. Hmm? Huh? Now, little Ella Rose isn't even here yet. But when she gets here and she comes knocking on my office door, she's already got the keys to it. Hmm? I'll keep it well stocked with chocolate and ice cream and all the things mama says she can't have. Some of y'all know I've done that to all the kids around here. huh? And she'll know where they are and she can have it all. Shoot, when we kept Bella, Bella knew where we kept the chocolate. You know why, brother, why Bella loves Brother Doug? Because of all the chocolate I put in that girl over the years. Huh? Ella Rose won't even have to ask. Now, if I feel that way about a grandbaby that I haven't even laid eyes on, how do you think God feels about us who he saved us and birthed us into his family? Miss Barb, there's nothing you can't seek Jesus for that you don't even already have. Huh? Do you realize that? We've been made joint heirs to his throne. Brother Clint, everything he has, you already have. Mm? Now, he doesn't dump it all on you at once. But there's never a time you don't seek Him for something you need that He won't grant it. Mm? There's never a time you seek Him for sometimes things you even want. You don't even need them. But He'll dump them on you. Because He's that good of a God. He loves you that much uh, that He's already granted you all of heaven. Uh, don't be negligent in seeking Him. He said you have not because you ask not. And those things that you do ask for, you ask amiss. Don't be asking for worldly things that you'll not use for His glory. But if you ask Him for anything that He'll be glorified in, you start asking Him for sinners to be saved. Start asking for revival. Start you know, seeking Him for, to be glorified in our services like He was this morning. Start seeking Him to be glorified in, in our praise and our singing. Start seeking Him to uh, 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 open doors for you to tell somebody about Him. You start seeking Him on those levels, and you won't start watching the doors fly open. Seeking you shall find. Don't be negligent in seeking the Lord. Hmm? I've told this story, but it's been a long time. When Jordan was a baby, I dropped him off to babysitter one, one morning, and it was a beautiful day. It was just starting to be spring. And there was sunny, and it was beautiful. And on the way out the, the door to take Jordan to the babysitter, just something said, grab a jacket. And I went to grab a little Izod uh, uh, golf jacket. And I think later on down the road, you got that Izod golf jacket, if I'm not thinking, I'm not mistaken, because I got too fat for it. But, but I started to grab this, and something said, grab that other jacket. I put that other jacket on, took Jordan to the babysitter, I'm driving, leave the babysitter, I'm driving to work. It's a beautiful day, and I'm going to be real honest. I was just talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, thank you for this beautiful day. It's been a great day for you to come back. And, oh, I'm just talking to the Lord, having a time. And next thing I know, there's some blue lights behind me. I'd come across Mount Zion, and back then it was just two lanes before they got it all tore up, and that won't be fixed until after Jesus comes, so don't worry about it. But I come flying down through there. I think it was a little section there where there's a speed trap 35 and I'm doing 55. Little blue lights come on and, and the deputy sheriff comes to the door and I had a little truck and come to the door and, and asked for my license. So I gave him my license. And he's looking at my license and told me I'm doing 55 and a 35. And he said, what was you doing? I said, 
Well, to be honest with you, I was talking to the Lord. I said, it's a beautiful day, and I was just thanking him for it. And he looked down, he says, Mr. Foster, are you with KSP, Kentucky State Police? And it dawned on me, that other jacket I put on, my father-in-law played for the Kentucky State because he was a Kentucky State trooper, but he played for the state police softball team, and they had the coolest jackets known to man. And I made comment of that. I said, man, that is a, I love them jackets. Well, for my birthday that year, he got me one of those jackets, had my name put on it and his badge number. I'm wearing that jacket. And that guy looked down at me, and he said, are you with KSP? And then it dawned on me what jacket I had. I said, no, sir, I'm not. I said, my father-in-law is. I said, he got me this jacket because I liked him so well, but no, I'm not a member of Kentucky State Police. He asked who my father-in-law was. Well, <laughs> my father-in-law was the king of the road, you know. <laughs> so I told him. He patted me on the back, handed my, 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 my license back, and said, have a good day, Mr. Foster. You said, your father-in-law get you out of that? Uh, I don't know if he got me out of it, if it's the Holy Ghost for telling me to put that there. All I know is I didn't get a ticket that day. Amen. But I didn't get a ticket that day because I was seeking the Lord. I was talking to the Lord. And listen, even though I deserved it, I didn't get it. And I want to tell you something. There's a lot of things we deserve. But if you were on the, fi uh, on the side of seeking the Lord and talking to the Lord and all that, he'll even get you out of things you deserve. Are you listening? Uh, don't be negligent and seek the Lord. Now, don't get out here and do 500 miles an hour and say, my preacher said you was going to let me off because I went to church tonight. Listen, my daughter's living proof. She's been pulled over more times. She even got her a, a thin blue line matter to love the police sticker on the back of her car. It didn't matter. Huh? <laughs> Although her brother got her out of one here not long ago. Uh, she dropped his name and she didn't get a ticket. As long as she stays around Oak Brook, she may be okay. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, don't be negligent in seeking the Lord. Let me say this last thing. Don't be negligent to shine. We are to shine as lights in a dark world. In the great sermon of the mount, the Lord Jesus said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. How are they going to see how good Jesus is in our life if we don't shine? If every time you get a problem, you're walking on your lower lip like they walk on their lower lip, are they going to want what you got? No. But if they see, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of your situation, uh, you can still throw hands toward heaven and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, hey, they're going to say there's something different about them. Uh, they have something in their life that I don't have in my life. Uh, don't fail to shine. Don't be negligent to shine. Uh, listen, uh, 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 everybody has bad days. Everybody goes through things. Uh, but you can't have a bad day when you're in the company of sinners uh, you got to let them know Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you don't be negligent to shine now I'm not talking about that phony put on junk I hate that phony stuff I hate that crowded you know no matter what Jesus is good Jesus is good oh, I mean, shut up you know they're always on a, on a roller coaster but they're always at the peak huh wear neon signs. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Well, if you need a neon sign to prove your love for Jesus, I don't know if you really love him. Uh, but when you hit the bottom of that thing, and you're in the valley, and folks still see praise coming out of your mouth, real praise to Jesus, they know what you got's real. Uh, when the diagnosis isn't good, and you're still going to church and worshiping Jesus, they know what you got's real. Don't be negligent to shine. Uh, I've seen this brother Ron I've seen folks go through things and God help them and as soon as they get back to the mountaintop it seems like they forget about God mm. they don't have a very good testimony anybody can praise God when you're on the mountain but when God's been good to you you owe it to God to be good to him don't be negligent to shine.
that light that God has put in you is the very thing that the devil's tried to invent and duplicate since man came on the scene. He can't do it. The bright lights of Hollywood, the bright lights of Las Vegas, the bright lights of, of, of cities, the bright lights of all of it, it doesn't compare to the light that is in you that shines in a dark world. I say it all the time. If people really saw the love of Christ, there would be no race problem. God's no respecter of persons. If people really saw the light of forgiveness in God's people, there'd be no problem like we see in this, this day and age, you know, no second chances and all this kind of stuff. Hey, aren't you glad God forgives sinners? God forgives sin? huh? And I'm glad I'm part of a church that it don't matter where they come from. We show them kindness and we show them love. That's what we're supposed to do. The world gets to seeing that outside these doors. They'll flock to it. Because everybody wants acceptance. Everybody wants help. And those that fight so bad against the church, what they really want is what's found inside the church. And if you can ever get them saved, they turn out to be some of the best Christians. Don't be negligent, folks. This thing's winding down. It's time we get busy. Hmm? We've got Christ for the Caribbean. We've got revivals coming up. We've got camp meeting coming up. We've got so many opportunities to showcase how good God is to us. You do it every day on the job. You do it in the community. Yes. Don't be negligent. Amen. Don't let up. Let people see how good Jesus is to you. Hmm? It's the only way we're going to make an impact. Hmm? And by the way, we do it one life at a time. If you show kindness to somebody, and they get right with God, they show kindness to somebody, somebody else gets... Or long, all of a sudden, boom, a whole host had. But if we're negligent, nobody will. Read these chapters, 29, 30, 31. See all the pains that they went through, and then revival came. And my dear friends, if we'll do the first works, look out, revival will come. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe God's revealed some things in your life you've been negligent over. Why don't you come and have a little talk with Jesus? Maybe tonight you want to come and ask God, God, put a hedge about me. Help me not to be negligent. Help me to be faithful with those things you've committed in my life. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Help us not to be negligent in the things of God. Help us to embrace them and to share them with a lost and dying world. Help us to stand. Help us to submit. Help us to, Lord, shine and do all those things for your honor and for your glory. Because, Lord, one day we was on the auction block of sin, and you came by our way and paid our sin debt. Lord, made new creatures out of us. Changed our, our destiny from hell to heaven. All because you loved us. Help us to love you back. Folks are praying, Lord, help them. Lord, I pray you just get glory and honor because you so richly deserve it. Help us not to be negligent. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.